Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Ramya with the Midday News. The headlines. Bhupendra Patel to be sworn in as new Chief Minister of Gujarat this afternoon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to lay foundation stone of Raja Mahindra Pratap Singh State University in Aligarh, Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu urges technological institutes to infuse a spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship and experimentation among the students. Over 74 crore 38 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate reaches 97.54%. Two-day conference of the Tourism and Culture Ministers of Northeastern States begins in Guwahati. Today is the last day for filing nominations for Bipol in the Bhawanipur Assembly constituency in West Bengal. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to convene a high-level humanitarian conference for Afghanistan today. IMD predicts heavy to very heavy rainfall in Odisha, Maharashtra and other parts of the country. And in U.S. Open Tennis, Daniel Medvedev shatters Novak Djokovic's dream for year slam with a straight set win. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. In Gujarat, the new leader of the BJP Legislative Party, Bhupendra Patel, will take oath as the 17th Chief Minister of the state today. The swearing-in will be held at Raj Bhavan in Gandhinagar at 2.20 p.m. Governor Achari Devrat will administer the oath of office and secrecy. According to state BJP sources, Union Home Minister Amit Shah will be present during the swearing-in ceremony. Apart from state BJP President C.R. Patil, the chief ministers of Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and Goa will also attend the function. Earlier, the state BJP President C.R. Patil told media persons last evening that only the chief minister will take oaths today. He said the oath-taking of the new council of ministers will be held in a couple of days after consultations in the party organization. A report. Before his swearing in as the next Chief Minister of Gujarat, Bhupendra Patel today met the acting Chief Minister Vijay Rupani at his Gandhinagar residence. Mr. Patel also met State BJP President C.R. Patil. Both the meetings are termed as courtesy meetings before the swearing in. Meanwhile, Mr. Patel was seen in action even before his swearing in. He called Jamnagar district collector this morning and asked him for quick action for relief and rescue of flood affected villagers. According to official sources, Mr. Patel also instructed to airlift 35 villagers stranded in flood water due to heavy rain. Yogesh Pandya, AR News, Ahmedabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh State University in Aligarh, Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. The university is being established by the state government in memory and honor of the great freedom fighter, educationist and social reformer Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh. The university is being set up in a total area of over 92 acres. It will provide affiliation to 395 colleges of the Aligarh division. The Prime Minister will also visit the exhibition models of Aligarh Node of Uttar Pradesh Defence Industrial Corridor and Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh State University. A total of six nodes, Aligarh, Agra, Kanpur, Chitrakur, Jhansi and Lucknow have been planned in the Defence Industrial Corridor. In the Aligarh Node, land allocation process has been completed and land has been allotted to 19 firms who will invest 1,245 crore rupees in the node. This corridor in Uttar Pradesh will help in making the country self-reliant in the field of defense production and promoting Make in India. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu today said that online classes cannot go on forever. 
Virtual classes cannot become actuals. He was addressing the inaugural function of Puducherry Technological University by upgrading Pondicherry Engineering College. He said the education sector has been among the most affected by the pandemic, with the teaching and learning process significantly disrupted. But the worst seems to be over, and with the world's largest free vaccination program underway across the country, we are looking at recovery from the unexpected setback. He also said that online education cannot be a substitute to classroom learning, and hence our students must return to schools and colleges at the earliest. He also urged institutions like Puducherry Technological University to infuse a spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship and experimentation among the students. Mr. Naidu, who is on a two-day visit to Puducherry, later inaugurated a solar power plant with a 2.4 megawatt capacity set up at Pondicherry University. He said that solar energy has shown great promise in recent years. India has administered over 74 crore 38 lakh doses of COVID vaccines so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. The Union Health Ministry said more than 53 lakh 38 thousand vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours. The ministry said 37,687 COVID patients recovered during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate has reached 97.54%. Till now, more than 3 crore 24 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19. The country reported 27,254 new cases in the last 24 hours. Currently, India's active caseload is at around 3 lakh 74,000. The active cases constitute 1.13% of the total reported cases. However, the daily positivity rate stands at 2.26%. 2.26%. The ministry said more than 54 crore 30 lakh COVID-19 tests have been conducted so far. The union government today said that more than 72 crore 70 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. Union Health Ministry said more than 4 crore 90 lakh unutilized vaccine doses are still available with the states union territories and private hospitals to be administered. The ministry said more than 8 lakh doses are in the pipeline. In the backdrop of fear of third wave of COVID-19 in Maharashtra, State Disease Surveillance Officer Dr. Pradeep Avate has said that the current trend of coronavirus in the state does not indicate surge in cases after the conclusion of ongoing festival season. However, he said it is difficult to come out with accurate prediction about the intensity of the third wave as the prevalence and spread of the virus depends on different factors, a report. While speaking to AIR, Dr. Pradeep Aute has said that there is difference of opinion among experts about the third wave in the country, but the current trend of COVID cases in Maharashtra does not indicate surge in COVID cases. He said there are chances of rise in cases after festival season as the factors like migration, non-compliance of COVID-19 guidelines, effect of rainy season as well as the atmosphere in particular area affect the spread of the disease. But nobody can accurately predict about the intensity of the spread of the disease. Dr. Aute said that the surge can be avoided if people continue to follow COVID appropriate behavior by avoiding crowding, wearing masks and hand sanitization. Shailish Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. In Tripura, with the continuous decrease in fresh cases of coronavirus infection, the physical classes of elementary education from class 1 to 5th have resumed from today. However, a written permission letter of the Guardian is required for attending the classes. Earlier, the State Education Department allowed reopening of schools for classes 6th to 12th with effect from the 25th of August across the state. Our correspondent has filed this report. With the directive, teaching is now starting in all classes in the school except for the nursery classes. Incidentally, with the permission of the State Disaster Management Authority, classes from 6th to 12th grade have been started in schools from August 25 as the corona outbreak is under control. In case of lack of adequate classrooms in the school, instructions were issued to make arrangements in two sessions. The order applies to state government, government funded in the private and madrasa, including TTAADC. Now, even at the elementary level, teaching is starting starting in schools. The Department of Education orders that head teachers and in charges should ensure students sitting routines and curriculum. Similarly, class days and weekly exams have to be ensured. Rina Nomaitem, AIA News, Agatala. 
A two-day conference of the tourism and culture ministers of the northeastern states has begun in Guwahati today. Addressing the conference, Union Tourism and Culture Minister G. Kishan Reddy said the tourism sector has the potential of being a game-changer for the northeast. Mr. Reddy hoped that people of northeastern states would directly benefit from the tourism sector through its various initiatives. He said the conference is a great opportunity to showcase the potential of tourism in the region and emphasized to build confidence among the tourists in the wake of the COVID situation. Assam Chief Minister Hemant Sarma urged all to adopt a holistic approach for the development of tourism sector in the Northeast. He stressed on development of better connectivity and infrastructure facilities. Union Ministers of State Arjun Ram Meghwal and Ajay Bhatt also attended the conference. In West Bengal, all major political parties have started their campaigning for the upcoming bi-poll in Bhawanipur Assembly constituency. Polling will be held on the 30th of September. It is the last day for filing of nominations today. More from our correspondent. The electors of Bhavanipur will have to take a major decision on the last day of this month as the constituency goes for bipol to choose its representative on that day. On the last day of filing nominations, left front candidates Rajiv Bishash and BJP candidate Priyanka Tibrewal have placed their candidature today, which means if found valid, Bhavanipur is going to witness a tough triangular contest between three lawyers. Chief Minister of the State and Trinamool Congress candidate Mamuta Banerjee, with a law degree in her bag, had already filed nomination last Friday. The by-election has had an enormous significance as Ms. Banerjee is required to win to retain her chair as the Chief Minister of the State. Madhu Parna Dhar for AIA News, Kolkata. In addition, polling will also be held simultaneously for two other assembly segments, Jongipur and Shamshirganj of Murshidabad. Polling to these two states had been stalled following death of candidates due to COVID-19. Inderjeet Singh, the grandson of former President Gyani Zail Singh, today joined the BJP. He was inducted in the party in the presence of Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, BJP MPs Dushyant Gautam and Anil Baluni at party headquarters in New Delhi. Mr. Puri welcomed him, saying his joining will strengthen the BJP in Punjab. The Tamil Nadu Assembly has passed a legislation to provide for admission to undergraduate courses in medicine on the basis of marks obtained in the qualifying examination. Moving the bill, Chief Minister M.K. Stalin said that the state government had taken the decision to introduce the legislation based on the recommendations of the high-level expert committee formed under retired Judge A.K. Rajan to eliminate NEET from being used in admission to medical programs at all levels by following the required legal and legislative procedures. He said that the legislation would ensure social justice, uphold equality and equal opportunity, protect all vulnerable student communities from being discriminated against and bring them to the mainstream of medical and dental education. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Bhupendra Patel to be sworn in as the new Chief Minister of Gujarat this afternoon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to lay foundation stone of Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh State University in Aligarh, Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu urges technological institutes to infuse a spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship and experimentation among the students. Over 74 crore, 38 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far, recovery rate reaches 97.54%. Two-day conference of the tourism and culture ministers of the northeastern states begins in Guwahati. Today is the last day for filing nominations for the bipole in the Bhabanipur Assembly constituency in West Bengal. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to convene a high-level humanitarian conference for Afghanistan today. IMD predicts heavy to very heavy rainfall in Odisha, Maharashtra and other parts of the country. And in the U.S. Open tennis, Daniel Medvedev shatters Novak Djokovic's dream for year slam with a straight set win. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Midday News. The depression formed over the Bay of Bengal crossed the North Odisha coast early this morning. Due to its impact, several parts of Odisha have been experiencing incessant rainfall over the last 24 hours. The Meteorological Department has alerted at least five western and interior Odisha districts of heavy to very heavy rainfall today. A report. The depression has induced a rainfall across the state that is both intensive and extensive, thereby throwing normal life out of gear. Several low-lying areas in cities like capital Bhubaneswar, Katak, Puri, Kendrapada and Fulbani have been inundated with rainwater. According to the meteorological department, at least 20 places of the state have recorded rainfall beyond 20 centimeters in the last 24 hours. That is classified as extremely heavy rainfall. The holy city of Puri has broken the rainfall record of the last 87 years by receiving 342.5 millimeters rainfall, with the highest being 530 millimeters recorded at Astaranga in Puri district during the last 24 hours. Many rivers, including the Mahanadi, are swelling, though the water levels continue to flow below the danger level. Fishermen have been advised against going out into the seas along and off the Odisha coast till tomorrow. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhavaneshwar. IMD has also predicted heavy to very heavy rainfall for the next three days in Mumbai, Thane, Palghar and several other parts of Maharashtra. The Met Office has issued a yellow alert for Mumbai with a forecast of heavy rain at isolated places of the city for the next two days. Talking to All India Radio, senior weather scientist R.K. Jainamani has given details about the rain forecast for several parts of the country. We have kept today also the Odisha in a extremely heavy rainfall warning and red color for 24 hours and it will move across South Chhattisgarh and uh, Madhya Pradesh towards Northwest during next two, three days. So the rainfall also increase over Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh during next two, two, three days. So we have kept also Chhattisgarh on extremely heavy rainfall warning for uh, day two tomorrow. So these areas, because the system is very intense, so these area we expect from Odisha, Chhattisgarh to Madhya Pradesh only heavy rainfall during next two to three days and Odisha today only, Chhattisgarh tomorrow, uh, 14 and Madhya Pradesh on 15. And uh, also over uh, Arabian Sea side, Gujarat and uh, Maharashtra, that is particularly the Konkan, very Palgati and Gujarat whole area is receiving very heavy rainfall. So because there is a low pressure area there also and because of that, next three to four days, Gujarat state particularly will have very heavy rainfall and today and tomorrow will have rainfall of 2200 millimeter or more. Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav today said that climate change is one of the biggest challenges for the world and it has multidimensionality effect. He said it requires a global response. Launching the Climate Action and Finance Mobilization Dialogue with U.S. Climate Envoy John Kerry in New Delhi, Mr. Yadav said India is committed at the highest level of combating climate change. The government is addressing challenge posed by climate change through its several key initiatives. We are working proactively in promoting low carbon and sustainable lifestyle and our action translate into India's multiple policies and programs aimed at synchronizing development and climate change action at national, state and local levels. The India economy is becoming greener through this conscious action and there are efforts to enhance energy efficiency across the economy, increase the share of renewable energy in the national mix and enhance forest and tree cover while simultaneously meeting India's development challenge in a sustainable manner. India's climate action are rated high in many independent assessments. The minister said the Indian economy is becoming greener through conscious actions by the government. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. John Kerry said the climate change is the biggest challenge for the world and called for collective action. He said India and the U.S. are jointly working to address the issue. And I, the gold loans amounting to... And I want to thank uh, Minister Yadav for hosting this exciting event for the launch of the U.S.-India Climate Action and Finance Mobilization Dialogue. When I visited uh, India last April, before we held the summit in uh, Washington, before President Biden's summit, I was very pleased to be able to meet with and work with Prime Minister Modi to develop the U.S.-India 2030 partnership, which the Prime Minister and President Biden then announced at the summit. An old building collapsed in the Sabzi Mandi area in North Delhi today. According to the fire department, many people are feared to be trapped under the debris. Rescue operation is underway. Terming this as a sad accident, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has said the administration is engaged in relief and rescue work. Mr. Kejriwal said he is monitoring the situation. 
यूनाइटेड नेशन सेक्रेटरी जनरल एंटोनियो गुटरेस इज सेट टू कन्वीन अ हाई लेवल ह्यूमेनिटेरियन कॉन्फ्रेंस फॉर अफगानिस्तान टूडे इन रिस्पॉन्स टू द ग्रोइंग ह्यूमेनिटेरियन नीड्स इन द कंट्री एज पर द मीडिया रिपोर्ट्स द मीटिंग कम्स एट अ क्रूशियल जंक्चर वेन द लेवल्स ऑफ अक्यूट मेल न्यूट्रिशन आर अबव एमरजेंसी थ्रेश होल्स इन ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑफ द थर्टी फोर प्रोविंसेज इन द वॉर रेवेज कंट्री द वर्ल्ड फूड प्रोग्राम ट्वीटेड दैट ऑलमोस्ट हाफ ऑफ द चिल्ड्रेन अंडर फाइव एंड वन फोर्थ ऑफ प्रेगनेंट एंड ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग वुमेन नीड लाइफ सेविंग न्यूट्रिशन सपोर्ट ओवर द नेक्स्ट As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence a series of events is being organized by the government as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav to commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history the quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News since the 16th of August and will continue till the 15th of August 2022 Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at prasarbharati.gov.in. One lucky participant will be selected as a winner and will be awarded an e-certificate and a token prize. Let us listen now to our special program Azadi ka Safar. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Azadi ka safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day Sharb kharb kar kahe tab krodh da ho He bhoi rab shakti da भक्त पान चाहो सर्व खर्व कार टुडे वी ब्रिंग यू द स्टोरी ऑफ अ हीरो फ्रॉम बेंगाल इट वॉज ऑन दिस डे इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी नाइन दिस ग्रेट सन ऑफ इंडिया जतेन्द्र नाथ दास मेड द सुप्रीम सैक्रिफाइस फॉर द फ्रीडम ऑफ द कंट्री एट अ यंग एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स फॉन्डली कॉल्ड जतेन दास He challenged the might of the British in his own unique way. Jatin Das was born on 27th October 1904 at Calcutta. The devoted freedom fighter joined the Anushilan Samiti in Bengal at a young age. Later on he teamed up with Bhagat Singh and his comrades in the Hindustan Socialist Republic Association. Jatin Das also participated in the non-cooperation movement when he was 17 years old. He was a brilliant student. but chose to dedicate his life to the freedom movement the revolutionary freedom fighter could not see his jailed countrymen subjected to deplorable conditions by the british determined to seek better treatment of the indian prisoners he went on to a 63 day long hunger strike in lahore jail which ultimately cost his own life his sacrifice had the desired impact in terms of the jail authorities agreeing to improve conditions for political prisoners he was arrested by the british on june 14 1929 in connection with the lahore conspiracy case which relates to the killing of the british police officer john saunders by the revolutionaries jatin das suffered numerous hardships during his hunger strike he was brutally beaten up and efforts to force feed him damaged his lungs after his death his body was taken to bengal In Calcutta, Subhas Chandra Bose received his coffin at the Howrah railway station. Over seven lakh people attended Jatin Das's funeral procession in the city. Subhas Chandra Bose called him the young Dadichi of the nation, the ancient Indian sage who also sacrificed his life for noble cause. It was on this day in 1948 the operation Polo was launched by the Indian Army to integrate the Hyderabad state into the territory of India. By 1948 most of the princely states had acceded to India but the state of Hyderabad had chosen to join neither Pakistan nor India. The then Indian Home Minister Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel requested the Nizam to join India but he refused. The Nizam initially approached the British government with the proposal to designate Hyderabad as a constitutional monarchy. 
within the Commonwealth of Nations. The proposal was rejected by the last Viceroy of India, Lord Louis Mountbatten. For many years, the Nizam was facing popular resistance led by the Arya Samaj, the State People's Congress, under the leadership of Swami Ramanand Tirth, demanding the integration of Hyderabad with India. Under the Nizam, an exploitative agricultural structure had come to be established in Hyderabad. 40% of the land was either directly owned by the Nizam or given by him to the elites in the form of Jagir's special tenures. By the 1940, a movement of resistance was taking shape among the peasants against the Nizam and his policies, and it reached its zenith by 1946. <laughs> On September 13, 1948, Indian forces entered the state at 4 a.m. under the Operation Polo. At 5 p.m. on 17 September 1948, the Nizam announced a ceasefire. Subsequently, he signed an instrument of accession joining India. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in next episode tomorrow. आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार In today's episode of Dharohar we will be bringing you the speech of first president of India Dr Rajendra Prasad delivered in the constituent assembly Daniel Medvedev of Russia lifted his first Grand Slam trophy after beating Novak Djokovic 646464 in the US Open men's singles final at the Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York last night the second seed Medvedev shattered Djokovic's dream for a calendar Grand Slam and a 21st major by dominating from the start to the finish now let us take a look at the weather update for today the national capital delhi is predicted to have gently cloudy sky with light rain temperature will rise from a minimum of 27 to a maximum of around 33 degrees celsius mumbai will have a gently cloudy sky with heavy rain and temperature will hover between 24 to 29 degrees chennai will have a gently cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle maximum temperature expected to be around 35 degrees it recorded a minimum temperature of 28 kolkata will have gently cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers it had a minimum temperature of 26 maximum expected around 33 Bengaluru will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain and temperature will hover between 20 and 29 degrees Hyderabad will have rain or thunder showers towards evening or night temperature will fluctuate between 24 and 30 degrees celsius and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Bhupendra Patel sworn in as new chief minister of Gujarat this afternoon Prime Minister Narendra Modi to lay foundation stone of Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh State University in Aligarh Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu urges technological institutes to infuse a spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship and experimentation among students. Over 74 crore 38 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate reaches 97.54%. Two-day conference of the tourism and culture ministers of northeastern states begins in Guwahati. Today is the last day for filing nominations for Bipol in Bhawanipur Assembly constituency in West Bengal. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to convene a high-level humanitarian conference for Afghanistan today. IMD predicts heavy to very heavy rainfall in Odisha, Maharashtra and other parts of the country and in US Open tennis Daniel Medvedev shatters Novak Djokovic's dream for a year slam with a straight set win. And with that we end the midday news.